and then you can minimize it down to the bottom. I appreciate that. Okay, so everybody should be logged on to um, to Moodle, and then just open up Gmail so that you've got your Google Apps account logged in. Basically, whenever you log on to Moodle, if you hit any of those Google stuff on the side, you're logging on to your Google Apps account in the first place. Okay, so we're here to talk about Lucidchart, and I've got a uh, class open uh, in, in EdTech Teach that talks specifically about some of the things that Lucidchart does. Lucidchart is basically a free version of something very, very similar to Inspiration and Kidspiration, like I said. It lets you do things visually for students that learn better visually. Okay. I've got some YouTube videos that talk about some of the different visual learning things, and we're going to watch those, if you don't mind, because I think they know more than I do about it. Okay. I'm going to show you Lucid Chart after we're done watching a couple. This one actually was my intro, but I wasted a whole bunch of time. We're going to go ahead and play. This is done in Lucid Chart, just so you know. Let's see if... I don't have any sound. This is this is this is somebody using Lucid Chart to, to do a flow chart of the song page you. But it kinda it's kind of an illustration of some of the things you can do with Lucid Chart. It has all kinds of graphical tools and you can add any kind of audio, video pictures into Lucid Chart as well. So if you're an elementary school teacher and you want to do um, pictures of animals on a, on a graphical organizer chart, you can just drag and drop them straight off the of Google images. It goes really, really easily. I had no idea how they got that video. <laughs> demo of Lucid Chart. Um, this one applies more to business, but it kind of lets you see some of the things you can do as far as. Boy, it really is quiet. You have to crank his way up in here. Kristen in Stockholm. There we go. It's because the volume was wrong on there. Uh, this is really just showing you the fact that you can share back and forth with other people. It works like Google, any Google Apps thing does this to be shared. Wait, this doesn't have the changes I told you to make. Let me send you mine. No, no, that's not right. 
Uh, there's no time to fix this. Presentation's in 30 minutes. I gotta go. Yeah, so I didn't quite have time to finish the diagrams, but just imagine... Thankfully, it doesn't have to be this way. With Lucidchart, you and your coworkers can create and edit diagrams and mock-ups together in real time. Get on the same page with your team members and clients, literally, and make version tracking and back and forth emailing things of the past. When you've got something to communicate visually, Lucidchart gives you the tools to do it both intuitively and with style. So you can work from any device, anywhere you can log on to the web. Get started with Lucidchart now and discover the future of diagramming. Lucidchart. <laughs> Diagrams done right. Okay, so there's a couple things. Now, that these are specifically the things that Lucy Chart talks about its ability to do. In fact, the, the text of this is, is from uh, inspiration. You can use it as gra graphic organizers. You can use it to do concept charts. You can use it for mind maps. And you can use it for webbing. Uh, and the nice thing about it is, as a teacher, I could come up here without uh, having used and I could come up here and I could do a, a, a mind map and I could do all my stuff up here without this chart. And I, if I'm just going to do it for me, there's no reason I have to have something like Lucid Chart, although it probably writes better than I do. But a mind map, it's not about just us doing it and showing them, it's about them being able to do it too. So if you use something like Lucid Chart, you can have your students do it kind of like you, you can do with the Google Doc. You have your student make their own mind map, their own concept chart. They can do it themselves, and then they can share it to you, so then you can see all the ones that your students have done. So you can do projects using Lucid Chart like you can if, if for instance, um, Mr. Eiler's got something that he's doing in, in English, and they're reading a book, and he says, I want everybody to do a concept map of the major theme of the book centered around this character, okay? And he teaches them what they are, and then they could use Lucid, Lucid Chart in the lab to every single one of them could do one. And in the end, they all share them to Mr. Eiler. And now he can grade them all online, look them online, bring one up and say, hey, this is the best one I got. Look at how well, well that he talked about, you know, Hamlet here. The only one that came to mind right now. Okay, and we can talk about the major characters and the plot line. And the idea with using graphical tools like this is there are a lot of students that will remember it. In fact, the person who came up with the mind map at general says it's the only way people remember it. He says his, his opinion is if you use a mind map, you remember everything because mind maps organize things the way your brain does. If you use mind maps to help students take notes, or graphical organizing really kind of different ways of talking about the same thing, but then your students will remember. And the, the nice thing about Lucidchart is that just that they all have the access to it, they can all do them, and they can all share them with each other or with you. You can do it as a group project. You have five kids working on the same mind map or the same uh, project at the exact same time, just like they just showed really quickly in that video. And not only can they work together and see the same chart, but Deb then can see who did what. So I can go through the revision tracking and know that you know Johnny did all the work and you know Julia's just trying to take credit for it but she didn't do one edit on the whole thing even though she's on the front. You can actually when you're doing a project, when you do some of these online tools, you can actually see who did what, as opposed to just having somebody go in the, come in the classroom and say, here's our project that we all did together, and you know traditionally what happens, there's one student that carries the Okay, so I'm going to show the little video on concept maps too.
A graphic organizer is a visual and graphic display that depicts the relationships between facts, terms, and or ideas within a learning task. Some other aliases for graphic organizers that you may encounter include visual maps, mind mapping, concept maps, cognitive organizer, concept diagram, and visual organizer. So, instead of handing your principal 30 to 50 separate sheets of ideas, you can organize all of those ideas on one page in a visually pleasing manner for those of us that are learning. Graphic organizers are useful for all ages and can help clarify your thinking. It is important for parents to know that students retain more information when they use graphic organizers. This is because they chunk information in much the same way the human brain is supposed to. So Karen's job, which as a teacher, we all know is easy, becomes even easier when she has introduced and trained the students in the use of graphic organizers. She can help her students focus their thoughts, gather the information, and review content. because it really um, is talking about a bunch of different sites other than the Lucy Church. So, yeah, I know. I don't know why people have background music yeah. so that you can't actually hear what they're talking about. So, so and, and by the way, the, the thing I'm referring to right now that, that this stuff is at, I'm going to put more on there. If you go to edtechteach.com, which is our professional development website, if you don't know that, and if you go down to the bottom, where it says conference materials, the very top thing in conference materials is where the presenters are going to put their stuff from the in-service today. Uh, and, and all we're at really is a web, uh, that I'm looking at is just a website uh, where I've been dropping this stuff as I've been finding uh, videos and stuff. So that's all that is. The last thing I do is go over mind maps. Um, I think most people know what a lot of these other things are, but I would not say that mind maps, at least myself, that I knew what a mind map was before I doing, started doing some research on, on uh, it's just a different way of thinking through a graphical organizing, organizer, really. Ultimate organizational thinking tool. They are the easiest way to put information into your brain and to take information Sorry. out of your brain as they literally map out your thoughts. Teddy Bazan invented mind maps back in the 1970s. A mind map is a thinking tool that reflects externally what goes on inside your head. We're now going to look at how to mind map in six simple steps. Let's begin mind mapping. Step one. Firstly, start by creating your central idea. This will define the theme of your mind map. This should ideally be an image, as images have much greater impact than words. Images encourage your imagination, keep your mind focused, and help you to remember. You can choose between a selection of iMindMap images, or you can import your own. iMindMap allows you to add a short... Now, I have this. Obviously, we're not going to talk about the Zan's iMindMap, which is paid service. All the things they're doing here, you can do with Lucidchart, which we're going to get to it. Text as, as, as well as your image, image if needed. Step two, you need to add your ideas and thoughts to your mind map. You can do this by adding branches for each of your ideas. Curved, organic branches are the most effective as they reflect the structure of your brain. Straight lines are rigid and therefore boring. They don't excite your mind which means that you aren't soaking up so much information. Curved, rounded lines create variety and excitement for your eyes, making the information they hold easier to remember.
Give your main ideas thicker branches to show their importance. Your branches should become less and less thick as you add your second and third level ideas. You can create curved branches easily using iMindMap. Simply use your mouse and the pre... You know what, I'm not going to spend any more time on this one because I, I want to get to Lucid Chart and show you how to use it and stuff. So I don't want to waste too much time. You guys can watch that video and there's tons of other YouTube videos to watch. I just kind of wanted to introduce it. Now, I think I saw mind mapping on the PD362. Oh, okay. And I didn't think about that. I should yeah. look for a PD360 video. So yeah. and that would have been a better use of our assets. Yeah. Okay. So once I'm on uh, Gmail um, and I'm on our, our school account, you're not going to be able to get to this from a personal Gmail account. Just so you know, it's educational free thing that we got. If you go to more, the drop down is going to show you some recent things that I added to our Gmail that are free, okay? Those being Break Pop, Easy Bib, iRubric, and Lucid Chart are four things that we just added that they allowed me to get a free account and link it to our, our uh, accounts. Now, if you're an English teacher, I'll just tell you if, if you use Easy Bib or any of the other rubric items, if you use this Easy Bib, um, you don't have to set and create an account. Automatically it has an account for every single one of the students. You can, if you've used EasyBib before, it lets you create projects so that if you're doing a project, you can get all the bibliography items for that project together under that, that project and then it lets you easily. It only works for MLA for free, by the way. But that's all we use, so that's okay. Um, just to let you know that that's there too. So if I go to the drop down though and I go to this chart, I'm going to come open. I'm going to automatically open up our Lucid Chart. Well, there's, all, well, there's also one called iRubrics, which is a, again, links straight to a free account for you to create rubrics online if you want to. So, this is what Lucid Chart opens up as. What? Do we have passwords in there? Yeah, no. Okay. Brain Pop, I need to do something to to still set it up. Because it's supposed to be free, we're supposed to be registered, but it doesn't log into an account for you. So, I have not spent a whole lot of time trying to set up brain pop, but from uh, the reaction of a couple teachers in the front row, apparently I need to uh, try to get that set up. So I don't even know what brain pop is. It was just one of those, hey, if you've got an educational account, you can link this for free and use it for free. Okay, well, I will try to make it work. By the way, I moved all your PSA videos to your T drive because your hard drive was yeah, I, I kept couldn't record anything. <laughs> I tried to use a smart recorder last night when I was setting it up. Um, and I'm going to get you a bigger hard drive because you okay. have a smaller. I don't have to do all those on there anyway, though. But yeah, but you've got a 30 gig drive, and most teachers have 80 gig drives. So you, you, you've been cheated. Okay, so here's Lucid Chart. The first thing you can do, just so you know, there are thousands of Lucid Charts already out there for free for you to use if you want to use an existing one. They had a competition that I didn't know about until February 20th that the best 10, I think, Lucid Charts that were submitted to the community all won free iPads. Oh. And I'm like, oh, man. So if I would have known, I would have done a Tech Thursday on it and tried to help somebody get it. Anyways, we missed that one. So, so that's part of the reason there's so many out there right now that did that project to try to get more people to share, share charts they so to, to create one, all I have to do is hit create, and it's going to ask for, do you want to make a new document? You can make folders too to uh, organize your stuff. I'm going to say a new document. There's a bunch of frameworks that you could choose from that you see the categories over here. And really what that, when I choose my category, it's going to preset the graphic tools on the left-hand side to that kind of thing, okay? So if, for instance, I want to do a mind map when I link things together, it looks differently than if I just say I want to do a basic flow chart. So just so you know, those things are there. But there's all kinds of things. It's got flow charts, wireframes, mind maps on there, organizational charts, Venn diagrams. And like I said, what it changes is the graphics that are available. I'm going to go ahead and choose mind map and then um, do a blank mind map, okay, just to show you the basic tools when it comes up. It takes just a second to load. And once it's loaded, it's like any other Google Doc that if I open it up to somebody else, they can I can have it so they only have view permissions. I can make it so I'm just going to use this. I can make it so they have view permissions. 
They can have editing permissions. You can see the share button up here right in the right hand corner. So if I wanted to share this, for instance, with Deb at the same time, it works exactly the same as the Google Docs do. I just have to enter her school email account in there. So if I want to share it to her, I can put I just put her email address in there, dtensman at nationaltrail.us. I can either give her viewing permissions, editing permissions, or I can transfer ownership. I wouldn't do that um, unless you really were going to delete the account or something. So I'm going to go do that. I can add an email down here if I want to, and then I just hit send invitation, and Deb's going to get an email saying, hey, this Lucid chart is available to her. Okay. You can see that's optional. And now it shows that, that Deb's on this one as well as me. And that's what, if you're going to do as a student project, you want to make sure that you have your students share it to you. Our emails are all easy. It's our username at nationaltrail.us. Okay, so there, there's nothing, and I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget to do that. Now, it automatically starts out with mind map with the circle in the center, because that's how mind maps start off. But I can easily drop photos or any kind of picture, you know, they talked about the design thing that it should be a, you know, the center thing should be a picture. Well, how hard is it to drop a picture in? I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a picture. I'm going to just bring up, um, oops, Google Images at the same time. And I'm going to bring these side by side. So I've got Google Images over here. And I'm going to get a picture of a dove. Because I think I'm pretty safe if I say dove that I'm not going to end up with something bad. And I can just drag that for look. I still, I still, I Do I have to save it first? I thought I could just drag right from another web page. So I saved this picture right to my desktop because I thought I could drag it straight from another web page, but apparently it didn't. So there's my image of the dove. And now I'm going to drag it to my desktop, and that's all it takes, it takes to get a picture in there. So if you want to get a picture, apparently I can't drag it from a website, although I swear I did that the other day. And then I can put that and make that the center thing of my mind map if I wanted to. Get rid of the other. Then to add all these chart things to the side, it's pretty, pretty simple. I just drag them in. And then if I want to connect them, I just drag a line between the two. And I'm automatically, automatically connecting my missed a little bit. There we go. And if I want them to be curved, like I said, curved lines are better. Okay. All I have to do is move a little bit. So as I as I drag things in, being unsuccessful with mine. There we go. As I drag things in, because it's a mind map. It automatically tries to make the lines curvy, but on a flow chart, it automatically try, tries to make the lines straight. So that's part of the thing about deciding what you want to use beforehand. I have my lines. Not, they start off curvy, and then once I get it there, it goes straight. Uh, did you pick a mind map when you start? Yes. I don't know yeah, the answer to that. Map. See? It'll start off curvy, and then I put there, and then it goes straight up. Oh, maybe it's because you're, I don't, I don't know what that kind of item is, so maybe it's the item. No, it was doing it before, too. And then you can just put it whenever you want. I don't know. Okay, well, I'll figure it out. Okay. How'd you get the picture? Yep. Uh, I just dragged it right onto the site, so I, I, I saved the picture first. And then um, one of the things that you do need to do in this one, 
that you don't need to do in Google Docs is you need to save it. It'll ask you when you try to leave, but in Google Docs, every time you make a change, it automatically just keeps saving for you. I don't even want to know what you're doing over there. So you got to make sure that you remember to save the document when you're done. Does anybody play Air Oregon Trail in their classroom with their kids? I found this, this Lisa chart to be really funny. If you've ever played it, it's kind of... Uh, not on the 